G'day. Well, it's summer here finally in Australia, and you know what that means? Grilling season. Whether you live in the southern or the northern hemisphere, to be honest, it's always grill season, so stick around and watch this video anyway. Today, I'm going to run you through seven recipes perfect for your gas or your charcoal barbie. Let's get stuck in. First up, we're gonna start with the spatchcock chicken and a little peri-peri inspired marinade. So let's get that done first. Real simple, we're gonna to blend together one chili, seeds and all, a red onion, just dice it to help your blender. Got some, ugh, some already roasted capsicums, kind of cheating, but nothing wrong with a little cheat code every now and then, is there? Some dried thyme. Sweet paprika, big pinch of salt, red wine vinegar. Now one of the tricks when making marination for barbecue is to try and avoid using sugar when you've got things that take a while to cook. Sugar's gonna caramelize and burn faster than your meat's gonna cook, like in this whole bird, for instance. Blender up. To spatchcock our bird, take your bird and get it nice and dry, flip it on its front, cut the tips off. You can leave them on to be honest, but I don't think you're gonna eat them. And then we're just gonna run our knife, or our scissors, straight down the backbone here, trying to keep in the oyster. So the oyster sits in this part here of the bird, which is like the best part of the meat. We're gonna cut it up here, make sure we go around that spot and then keep going past the neck. One side done, the other side. Clean this up in the center. Just look for any fragments of bone in there. And then use a paper towel and dry it well in the cavity. And that's gonna help your marinade stick better. Flip it over. Now, this wasn't me. This came out of the packet like that. Flatten it out like that, as if you're giving it CPR. Just crack that backbone and it will sit flatter. Stunning. Just gonna trim this bit up here a bit more. Time to get the marinade on. So we're just gonna worry about getting the marinade on the underside first, and then we'll put the rest on once it's on the grill. I like using a pastry brush. You can just pour this on and use your hands, but I think you can kind of get into the crevices a bit better here. Just make sure you wash your pastry brush really well after in boiling water and in the dishwasher. So don't stress if, you're not, if you don't use it all in the first pass, you can kind of add it as the chicken's cooking to the grill. So let's talk about grill setup quickly. I've got this side on low. Haven't got the sear zone on. If your barbecue has a sear zone, you don't want that on for this. A sear zone is basically just an extra burner. And I've got this side up nice and high. What's gonna happen is the residual heat is gonna kind of start cooking the, the chicken from the top. The thing with chicken is that you want to kind of brown the skin, but you don't want it to stick. So I've had this barbecue on for about half an hour. It's got a lot of residual heat in it, but then I've turned it right down on one side. So we're going to start with the bottom side down first, just like so. I'm going to run and wash my hands and then we'll get the, the marinade on the top. So like I was saying, if we had sugar in this marinade, this would burn real quick. You can hear the heat in that grill, even though it's down low. The cold chicken hitting the grill is going to take all that heat out. And then we should get some really nice kind of slow forming caramelization. That's the, that's the goal. This marination looks way spicier than it is. It's not that spicy. You can make it as spicy as you want. Just add as much chili powder as you want to it. But I've got to feed basic Mitch and basic Daz, so we've gone easy. Close the lid. I'm going to let that cook for like 10 minutes like that. And we'll come back and check it. This is actually about 14 minutes in. You can see we're getting some nice color even on the outside. Just gonna lift this off carefully. You don't want this to stick obviously and break up. You can see that it's almost starting to cook the top too. So just edge yourself around, make sure it comes off the grate before you, I guess, commit to flipping it. Over she goes. Oh yeah. And once you flip, don't try and move it. Don't try and adjust it, whatever you do. Flip it, put it down and leave it. At this point, I am gonna get some more marination on the top or on the bottom, I should say, just to keep it nice and moist. Then we'll flip it once more just to get that kind of marination on the other side, and we should be good to go. Let's come back in another 10 minutes. All right, we should be about ready for the last flip. I'm looking for about 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140 Fahrenheit in the thickest part, which I've got there. We'll flip it, and then we're gonna cook it for a few more minutes on that side, and then it should carry over cooking to about 65, 70 degrees, and it will be fine to eat at that point. This is the nerve-wracking part. Flipping it at this point, all the skin should be nice and caramelized if it's all gone well, and it shouldn't stick to the grill, but I'm nervous. Don't be afraid to just kind of lift it up a bit, make sure it doesn't catch too much. Yeah, okay. Pretty happy with that. We got a little bit of a tear up in this corner. This corner here was the part that was already torn when it came out of the bag, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Nice amount of char, which is what you want. The char is flavor. So we're just gonna get the rest of this marinade on here. Once that's set up in about five to six more minutes, we should be good to take that off. Tell you what, it smells pretty good. Close that lid down, we'll come back in six minutes, and we should be good to go. All right, let's see how this is looking. Woo, looking good is how it's looking. Take this off, try and keep it together. Absolutely stunning. Now, in my opinion, this doesn't need much garnish at all. I'm gonna place some lime wedges on here. Bit of extra zing. There we go, grilled chicken with a peri-peri inspired marinade. This one is an absolute winner. And once you nail how to grill a butterfly chicken, you'll do it every time, trust me. Next up, let's grill some delicious 
delicious sweet corn. Corn! <laughs> it's got the juice. Real simple, peel your corn. Probably don't need to watch me doing that. Once you peel the corn, all we're gonna do is blanch it in some boiling salted water for five to six minutes, just to start the cooking process. If you, you can cook this all the way on the grill. I've done it a lot like that, but it'll take about half an hour. Whereas doing it like this, you'll get good char on it in like five to 10 minutes. Five to 10, that's pretty broad. Eight to 10 minutes, and it should be pretty much cooked through. We're just gonna garnish it with some kipi mayo, some lime zest, and some tahini. You can also cut these down into like twos or threes so people don't have to commit to a whole corn cob. Into the hot water, seasoned water, boiling water, in they go, nice and careful. Don't burn yourself, it hurts. Put the lid back on. Five minutes later, good to go. Ooh, oh, look at the color change, nice and yellow. It's got the juice. Thanks for putting that in my head, Daz. At this point, you can just cool this down. So you can do it the day before if you wanted. Uh, you can do it the morning of, cool it down the fridge and then grill it. When you grill it through, it is just gonna warm through anyway. But now it's pretty much cooked through. We're just grilling it for color. We've got our charcoal grill here, absolutely raging hot. It is white hot, you can see that. And then this is one of those occasions that I use spray oil on stuff. And just cause you're gonna get a nice even coat. If you put too much oil on this, it will flame up, which is what we don't want. We just put a little light coating of oil and on it goes. Now, I like my corn to have lots of char. I think the char really helps with the flavor. So we'll just put the lid down open it every three or four minutes, give it a turn. So this is what we're looking for, a nice even char all the way around. These are good to come off. So to garnish, we'll keep it real simple. What I like to do, mayonnaise, doesn't have to be cupy, can be kind of any mayonnaise really. Or you can keep it real simple and just shove some butter on there. Nothing wrong with that. Lime zest, tahini. Oh, it smells so good. There you go, grilled corn, super simple. Who's not gonna like that? Next up, we're gonna do some tri-tip. Interesting cut of meat, probably a bit more affordable than sirloin and works really well for the technique that we're gonna use the reverse sear. Did you know that Christmas is just around the corner and I have the perfect Christmas gift for yourself or someone else? My cookbook, the link is down below. There's a whole bunch of copies left. Get your copy now. It's got some fantastic recipes like a seven hour lamb shoulder. Do something different this Christmas, make some lamb. And then a New Year's, Dutch New Year's treat, my mum's Ollie Bolin recipe. We had these every New Year's, they're a delicious fried donut and they go well with a nice little anglaise. Go buy yourself a copy or one for your mum or your dad or your sister or someone, the link is down below. So the tri-tip, it's becoming more and more popular as the price of picanha, or rump cap as we call it in Australia, gets more expensive. It comes from a similar region, but a bit lower down uh, on the hip of the animal. Uh, and this here is a, is a Carrara Wagyu tri-tip. Sometimes I get a bit of stick for using Wagyu, but like I've said before, I work for a company that produces this stuff. Uh, but I think if you did want to try some Wagyu, this is a really kind of a cheaper way to do it, if that's at all possible. This isn't a super high grade, high marble score Wagyu. Um, it's about a marble score six or seven, I'm pretty sure. Um, all we're gonna do is simply season this with salt, pepper, in respect of Guga Foods, uh, a bit of garlic powder, because we know he loves his garlic powder. And then we're gonna reverse sear it. So let's get this seasoned up. Salt, all over. And you got a pretty big, thick piece of meat, so I might be thinking that's a lot of salt, but it'll, it'll take it. Now, a bit of garlic powder. You can use any rub you want on this. Some fresh pepper. To the grill. I'm just gonna use a probe that comes on my barbecue. If you don't have one of these probes that kind of automatically reads the temperature, you can just use a, a, like an instant read probe. Get it right in there. Set up for our grill here. We only have this one far burner on full and we're gonna place it at this end here. So I've got the probe in there and the alarm is set to go off at 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 Fahrenheit. Once we get to that temperature, we're gonna take it off, turn the grill up to maximum. We're gonna rest that uh, beef for a little bit and then we're gonna seal it really hard on the really hot grill. It should take about 40 minutes to get there, but I'll let you know once it's done how long it took. There we go, it's uh, 50 degrees. It took way longer than expected though. That took like an hour and a half almost. It'll be in the recipe. That's gonna take an hour and a half. Note that um, this barbecue was kind of running at about 135 Celsius. So maybe that's why it took so long. Anyway, we're there. Out that probe comes, out the meat comes off. Looks a bit strange, I know, but it'll be okay. Crank the barbecue up to full bore and we'll let that preheat right up and then we'll grill this really quickly. All right, our barbecue is nice and hot. We're just gonna add a little bit of oil to the outside and on she goes. I may have put too much oil on that. You don't really want flames when you're barbecuing. It's a kind of a misconception. If you're barbecuing and you see big flames, you're actually just scorching the outside. Ideally, you don't want any flames. Sometimes it happens though. A little bit of like kissing of the meat's fine. Big flames, no good. Tips for dandy. That's looking good. Good color on the outside there. Nice and golden, a little bit charry in some spots. Delicious. All right, time to come off. 
because of the the slow rise in temperature reverse searing you don't need to rest it as long as you do cooking a steak normally straight through from the grill and we already had some rest time while our steak was uh, sorry while our barbecue was heating up we can carve this pretty much straight away you can see here the grains are going this way pretty pretty obvious i don't know if you can see it on camera but in, in, in real life it's really clear some steaks it's not super clear this one it very it very much is so we're going to cut against that so i'm going to swing this around this way to me and then start carving this way so there you go reverse seared tri-tip Fantastic flavor, really beefy flavor. It's definitely not as tender as a picanha, but I don't mind that, I like a bit of chew there. But that's a great little cut of meat, far cheaper than a picanha. And if you're feeding a lot of people, it's a great way to do it. All right, next up, one of my favorite veggies to do on a barbecue, roast sweet potato. Take your sweet potato, you want a nice thick one, take the end off, and then we're gonna cut slices about that thick into a bowl. Olive oil, give them a toss. Make sure all the faces have oil on there. They don't need to be drowning in it, but you do need some oil or fat on there. So you can season these with whatever you want, but you're gonna start with salt. And then I am going to use some garam masala of all things. I think it's a great mild way to add some spice and a bit of clove and stuff to it. And you don't need much. You could do pretty much any rub that you wanted or you had or some Old Bay if you have it, some smoked paprika, a bit of garlic powder if you wanted, but I think the garam masala works really well. And it complements the sweetness of the sweet potato well. All right, they're looking good. To the grill. We're gonna go to this side here. This is like a veggie basket, I think they call it. Sorry, I don't know the name. It's not as important with the sweet potato, but if you're doing something like capsicum or like, you know, like a stir fry type of thing, you can kind of do it in here without the pieces of veggie uh, falling between the grates. Anyway, I've got this on like a medium heat this side. This side's still on nice hot. Give us some roasting ambient stuff. Just gonna lay all the sweet potato down in one flat layer, and then we'll keep the lid closed to get some uh, convection or some heat coming from the top as well. Because we've cut this nice and thin, it shouldn't take a crazy amount of time to cook. And the sweet potato, you can just grill like that if you don't have one of these baskets. Don't feel like you need to rush out and get one. Just put it on the grill. You just have to be a bit careful when you're flipping them, that you don't lose it between your grates. Perfect. How are we looking? Oh, stunning. Give them a flip. All right, I think these will be, oh yeah. So the easiest way to see if these are cooked or not, it's just if you can fold them in half and they break like that, that cooks through. So take them off and pile them on a plate. Now I like to finish this real simply with some chili crisp, which is, you know, in a lot of people's fridges these days. Well, I hope it is because it's delicious. Some fresh chopped parsley. There we go. A delicious carb option that's cooked all on the barbecue. Your barbecue's already hot, so you might as well use it. Now let's make the absolute classic, some beef and capsicum skewers or bell pepper if you're from the States. So skewers, now I'm a big fan of metal skewers because not only they don't burn, but you can use them more than once. If you are going to use the wooden ones, make sure you soak them in water for three or four hours first. It does stop them from burning. And then we've just got an array of veggies here. I like the three different colors of capsicum, some red onion diced nice and big and chunky. And I'm using some beef fillet here cubed up. I know beef fillet's really expensive, um, especially for doing this, but it actually works really well because it's so tender and you don't need to cook it for very long. If you don't want to spend the money on fillet, use beef rump. We call it rump here in, in Australia and the US you call it sirloin or a top sirloin, I think. But you kind of want something lean because it's hard for the, re the fat to render when you're cooking skewers like this. Real simple, start with one piece of veg, on goes a piece of meat, another piece of veg, some onion, some more meat, some more veg, some more onion. And we're gonna do three cubes of meat per skewer. Another one, some onion to finish. And there we go. Rinse and repeat. Stunning. We're gonna make a quick little glazy marinade thing. Not really marinade, because we're gonna leave them in it. We're gonna kind of brush it on. But it's pretty simple. Some dark soy sauce, some balsamic reduction. This is a pomegranate flavored one, but any kind of balsamic reduction will do. You just want that kind of sweet acidic and the thickness, the viscosity will really help it to stick. A couple of big cloves of garlic. These are quite big, so maybe three if you don't have such big cloves. Grate it into the marinade. It's not a marinade, Andrew, it's a glaze. Yeah, sure. And a bit of ginger grated in there as well. Feel free to add some chili to this too as well. Might be nice. Give that a little mix, take that with the pastry brush. And after our first sear, we'll start mopping this deliciousness on. All right, we've got our grill ripping hot here, which is exactly what we want. It's gonna use a little bit of oil on these so they don't stick. Probably should have used the bigger plate to season these. Season them with salt. I like the coarse rock salt. I know Josh doesn't, but I'm not Josh. On they go. Season the other side of these guys. We're gonna flip these once or twice maybe. 
and then we're gonna start glazing. So this is, will be pretty high in sugar from the balsamic. So like I was saying with the chicken, you gotta be careful because it will burn pretty quickly. The benefit of using something like beef fillet is it'll cook quickly, so it shouldn't be an issue. Should've got a longer pastry brush because this is hot. Couple more minutes and they will be done. All right, these are ready to come off. And there you go, pretty simple. Little beef skewers, some capsicum, red onion. Delicious. Now I'm gonna run you through my top tips for cooking the perfect steak on the barbie. Let's get grilling. Grilling steaks, I say this with an air of caution in my voice because everyone has their own opinion about how to grill a steak. Now I'm gonna run you through how I do it and feel free, if you do it a different way, let us know in the comments below. This is how I do it and my fundamentals and thoughts behind it. First of all, to dry brine or not to dry brine. Now dry brining is when you season your steak ahead of time and you leave it in the fridge. Uh, the salt turns to liquid and then effectively the, the liquid then gets penetrated into the pores of the meat and giving you a more even seasoning. It's true, in my opinion, it works. However, sometimes you don't have the foresight. If you haven't done it, don't stress too much about it. Tempering steaks, this is where you take a steak out before you cook it and you let it come to room temperature before you cook it. I don't believe in a steak like this, it makes that much of a difference. That's my personal opinion. There's been a few people that have done videos on it. Google did a good video on it. Uh, Max the Meat Guy did a good video on it. If you do like to temper your steaks, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And if you find you're getting good results, then by all means, carry on doing what you're doing. The thickness of your steak is super important. This is where it's hard to get a good thick steak in a supermarket. You're gonna need to go to a butcher. These aren't expensive steaks. This is a Kilcoy Blue Diamond Sirloin. It's a grain-fed steak. It's not even grated, I don't think. You can see it's got hardly any you know, uh, intermuscular fat but this is a delicious steak. There is nothing wrong with the steak and it's, and it's affordable. Let's season these steaks and get them on the grill. The oil I use when I'm cooking steaks is peanut. It's got a great high smoke point and it's got almost no or neutral flavor. Get some oil on there and rub it in so that it's nice and evenly coated and then season your steak well. Now I'm a purist when it comes to steaks like this. I don't put rubs on it normally. I don't put pepper, I find pepper burns, but you can do whatever you want to your steak at this point. If you are a rub person, by all means, get a rub on there. Really is up to you at this point. Our grill's nice and hot. Let's get these steaks on. So this barbecue's got a sear zone, but I don't have it on right now. And I'll tell you why in a second. That there is a big layer of delicious fat. We want that on our steak, but we also want to make sure it's rendered properly. Now, if we have that up ripping hot, it's gonna burn the flat or the, the fat before it renders. This is another reason why you need thick steaks. So you can stand them up like this and render that fat out. The issue you're gonna have is flare ups. And that's already started now. So you need to be pretty diligent at this point. If you get too much fat built up in one spot, you're gonna get flare ups. And like I said earlier, big flames is not what you want when you're cooking on barbecues like this. Control your temperature. The flare ups isn't the fire, it's just the fat hitting the hot element underneath and, and then igniting immediately. The steaks are naturally gonna to wanna to fall over. Just try and keep them up. Move your steaks around as well. If you start getting flare ups, you can move them around and then that'll push that fat to a different part. You really wanna avoid getting that, that main muscle part at the moment because we want that to be really hot when we hit that first. It's worth mentioning I've got this side down low and this side's on low also at the moment, but the barbecue is hot, it's got a lot of residual heat. So what I'm gonna do in a second is I'm gonna move my steaks and keep rendering the fat on this side. I'm gonna crank this side really hot to start searing the outside in a minute. Okay, we're getting good rendering here. Let's move these over here. This will also help season your veg basket or whatever grill you've got on this side. So we've got this side cranked back up as hot as it can go. I'm just gonna close the lid for a second, just get a lot of residual heat in that grate before we start cooking. All right, our grill's nice and hot. Let's get our steaks on. With these barbecues that have these lids on it, it's important to try and keep it closed as much as you can. They're designed to be cooking to cook with the lid closed and it keeps the heat in a lot more. How are we looking good? And we're still getting some flare ups here, which we want to avoid. So we're gonna bring that one right down the front. Same with this one. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. All right, so these are at like 26 degrees Celsius. So they're a little bit to go, but they start kind of heating up pretty quickly. Well, I'm going to turn this down just slightly. What we don't want to do is to have too much color before the steaks are cooked to the temperature we're after. I'm going to pull these off at 50 degrees Celsius today. And then once that's rested, it'll be about a medium rare. And I know my temperatures that I work off are very different to what's publicly kind of published on the internet. We've, I've done a steak video in the past before in a, in a, in a kitchen. Um, and there was a lot of comments on that one, but um, I, stand, I stand true to my, my temperatures. Oh. That's what I mean about temperature control. You can see here, this is probably a bit darker than I would like, but they're cooking well. 
check some temperatures. Still not quite there, but we're close. I'm actually going to put them up here for the time being because we're just getting a bit much colour. So these have definitely cracked 50. Let's get them off. In fact, I think I usually say 46 for medium rare. Let's see how these turn out. All right. So I feel like because these hit saw 50 and I pulled them off quickly. Let's double check the temperature. Okay, so that guy's reading bang on 50. We're gonna rest these for 10 minutes and then we'll slice into them. But this one's reading 54. It's also about feel. I can feel that's nice. This feels a bit tight. That feels a bit tight. That feels a bit better. Yeah, 50 on the dot. 10 minutes and we'll slice them up. All right, let's see how this turned out. Straight off the bat, the fat cat did get a bit more charry than I would have liked, but we live and we learn. I'm gonna cut this guy straight through the center and see what my 50 degree internal temperature looks like now. That looks pretty good. It's gonna, it'll oxidize and look even more red. Often when you carve steaks, they don't look as red as they're supposed to straight off the bat. So that was 50 degrees. But more importantly, let's see what it tastes like. Mm, nothing wrong with that at all. Tender, well seasoned, Still nice and juicy, delicious. All right, I promised the dessert at the start of this video, so it's time to make it and it's really quick and easy. I got this baby pineapple, it's super cute. You can get a baby one, it's better. We're just gonna grill it and serve it with some ricotta and some hot honey. I like to leave the top on, but you can certainly not. Peel the outside. Now you can kind of grill this thing whole. They often hang them by string over an open fire and do it that way, but if you try and do it faster, this is what I like to do. So you're gonna cut it right down the middle and then right through the top. And then you're gonna cut each one into three. Each half, I should say, into three. Just like that, to the grill. Make sure there's no stuff on there. And then we're just gonna grill it flesh side down just to get some nice bar lines on there effectively. Pretty much good to go. You can smell it immediately, kind of all the sugar's caramelizing. Really won't take long, this grill is really hot. If you go to move something on a grill and it doesn't move like that, just leave it. If you go to move something and it moves, it's good to come up. See, bar lines, that's what we're looking for. This guy, oh yeah, it'll move, there we go. Stunning, this guy, not ready. All right, just got a bit windy here, so excuse the windiness. Just looking for some nice color, flip it over. Stunning. My grill's lost a bit of its oomph, to be perfectly honest, but we're getting there. Oh, all right, I think we're good here. Off we get, and then we're gonna garnish this, and it's good to go. On the plate, drizzle of hot honey, optionally hot honey. You can just use normal honey if you want. This is some soft ricotta, just some nice quenelles, or rochers, whatever you call them. I can never remember the difference. And there you go, some grilled pineapple, hot honey, and smooth ricotta. And right on cue, it's about to bucket down with rain, so it's time for us to pack up and get out of here. Thanks so much for watching. Like this video if you took anything from it. Subscribe if you're not. And if you still want to cook a delicious steak for your mates or your family, then watch this video if you don't have access to a barbecue and I run you through a whole bunch of other ways you can cook a steak. Anyway, we'll see you next week and uh, I think we're on to Christmas. See you then, please.